Welcome, welcome back to the other side of Man to Man Pod. What you want to jump off with, AB? Man, let's jump right into it, man. Like you said, Sunday, man. Sunday, yesterday was Championship Sunday. Um, started off with the uh, NFC Championship. Um, so let's get it, man. The 49ers at the Philadelphia Eagles, man. Let's recap this game. Um, you said it before <clears throat> on the other side that the 49ers, man, they've been playing – a hell of a ball all year. Um, mm-hmm. They were down to the third uh, third string quarterback. Um, Travel to Philly. They played Jalen Hurts, my MVP, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, and early in the game, man, a huge, huge injury at the quarterback position that really just changed the whole um, dynamic of the game. Yeah. Um, it changed the whole dynamic. Um, you know, obviously, Josh Johnson, he gets in. He's a fourth string quarterback, and then he gets injured. Um, Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy comes back in. Um, what, what, what was your thoughts, man? Very, very unfortunate. Like you said, man, the Fort Niners been playing well all, all year. I think everybody was waiting for this game. Um, you know, both offenses, explosive, um, two very good defenses, yeah, very good coaches, sound football team on both sidelines, and one injury, which we know is part of the game, affects the game in a, in a, in a, terrible way for the 49ers what was your thoughts yeah i mean just an example another reminder of why you know we talk about all the time hey man these quarterbacks they get too much attention too much blame too much praise too much money sometimes uh, uh as far as salary cap goes but you see why the quarterback position is so important once purdy went down um you know, it's pretty, it, it was over. Obviously, Josh Josh Johnson has been around the league for a while yeah. as a vet. But, you know, you get put thrown into the NFC Championship game on the road. Uh, most quarterbacks not going to be able to handle that. Uh, Brock Purdy, I, I was excited. I was excited for the matchup. Brock Purdy has kind of taken everybody by storm, the whole league. Nobody expected anything from Brock Purdy once he got into that lineup. Outside of him, his family, probably his teammates that's been seeing him grinding all year. Um, and it was special. It was kind of going to be a storybook ending one way or the other. Uh, and I expected a great game. Obviously, San Fran uh, has had an explosive offense all season long with Purdy at the helm throughout these playoffs. Same with the Eagles. Defense, offense on both of these teams, man. So, huge letdown. Obviously, injuries are a part of the game. Um, but after that, what halfway through the first or, or halfway through the second, really once shots got knocked out, the shit was damn near like a preseason game. Like you yeah. have no, you we the, the Eagles knew, um, at least the viewers at home, we were watching at home. You saw Purdy struggling on the sideline, and and a lot of people on the, on my timeline I saw was like, hey man, Purdy, you can throw on the sideline. Why are you not in the game? You know, you got an elbow injury, you know, thug it out, play through it, like. I hate when people say dumb shit like that. You had no idea what that injury is, no idea how it feels. Yeah. You kind of like the emergency quarterback at that point. I can still still take a snap. I can hand the ball off. I think he threw one screen pass. But even on the sideline, you can see there was no velocity on those throws that he was throwing. So um, they were up against it. I think the fullback was the emergency quarterback. They didn't want to go that route. Uh, but it was ugly. They ended up winning 31-7. Uh, pretty much, even the last game with the Giants, pretty much cruise control too. So a lot of people gonna say, have the Eagles been challenged yet going into the Super Bowl? Uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts um, on that, you know, based on the route that they've taken so far. I can care less about the route, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, at the end of the day, you know, we, 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 we play whoever shows up, you know? So again, the 49ers, they were fortunate enough. They played well, they were there. It wasn't the Eagles fault that, you know, well, it was the Eagles' fault that the quarterback got hurt. I sound Reddick out there playing like a oh my dog. Gosh. You know, so um, and proud of that. You know, playing the Giants. So again, man, we can't complain about who the Eagles played. At the end of the day, they had a team that would match up against them. And they went out there and did what they were supposed to do. Um, very, very, very impressive. You know, I, I'm even watching the game and just looking at it, like for Jalen Hurts, like <clears throat> even his stat line. His stat line isn't crazy. You know, 120, like 121 yards passing. You know, um, I know at one point in the game, he was around towards the end of the game, around like 35, 40 yards rushing. So it's not it's not like he's lighting it up as far as the yeah. stat line, but the O line is playing magnificent. That run game is 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 great. And we talk about it early in the year, like, yeah, the quarterbacks, 
putting up big numbers. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to championship football, what the Eagles are doing, your front has to be dominant. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. That old line is being dominant. They're being able to run the ball, control the clock on the flip side, on the defensive side. We've seen it. That front is causing havoc, um, you know, late in the year and in the playoffs, man. So, again, Eagles did what they were supposed to do. Um, and you yep. can't you can't complain about that. The Eagles did what they were supposed to do. Again, unfortunate for the 49ers. Um, but, shit, they – I think they're in a, a really good situation. You got three quarterbacks <laughs> over there. Um, you got to see what you're going to do. Trey Lance, Jimmy G, and Brock. You got three guys that can. What you doing, guys. man? What you, um, what you what what are you doing next? Year? You you uh Kyle Shanahan. You obviously gonna make the call. Who is yeah. opening up? Your Brock Purdy. Camp? Brock Brock Purdy. Right now, he's he's the, he's my guy. He's my QB one. QB one. I've. I've seen enough. I think everybody's been waiting for that game where it's okay. That's who he really is, but he hasn't shown us that. So right now, going into the uh, going into next off season, Brock Purdy is my my quarterback one, and obviously, you know, with Trey Lance still a young quarterback, I hate it, but w- one of those two guys got to go. You know for sure. You know that's a crowded, crowded, crowded. Um, quarterback room so one of those other guys got to go but Brock Purdy man he's my my QB one yeah if I if I'm not mistaken I think Jimmy G I think he's a free agent a, after think, this year yeah um but you know gotta go and, and I'm right there with you Brock, Brock Purdy QB one I know that the draft position don't say it the contract doesn't say it uh but his play did and he he went out there and, and handled business all season long well for the part of the time that he was out there and coming into this game, um, Jalen Hurts, your MVP right now, would have been mine if he didn't miss those games. My MVP go, vote would go to Patrick Mahomes. Uh, but going into this NFC Championship game with Jalen Hurts, who's you know right in there in the MVP conversation, a lot of people still felt like 49ers had a great shot at this it, with a healthy Brock Purdy. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know if, if we're fifth, we all be drunk, so we're not going to play that game. Um, he did get hurt, and it wasn't like he – you know, trip off the plane, getting injured. To your point, Hassan Reddick being blocked by a tight end, I believe. Dog. I mean, this dude probably, Dog. if you had five candidates to be in a uh, defense player of the year conversation, he would definitely be in it. Um, nice. He's not in the final three. That came down to Nick Bosa, Michael Parsons, and uh, Chris Jones, who absolutely dominated that AFC championship last night. Uh, but Hassan Reddick had an unbelievable year. I know you've been talking about him all year long before the year even started. Yeah. Um, all these moves that the Eagles made, you know, obviously the injuries happened with San Fran, but you signed James Bradbury in the offseason. Yeah. You get a sign Reddick. Um, A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown, you make that trade. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, you get that trade over from the New Orleans Saints. In like the draft. You get all the, I, I, a couple of years ago, you bring Slay over. You bring all these pieces in. And you look at it on paper, and it's like, you know, this is how you give your team, uh, your quarterback, every your coach, everybody the best opportunity to succeed. And everybody did their job this year. You know, yep. everybody did their job. You know, obviously Hurts missed those couple games with the shoulder injury, but he gets back in there playoff time. Already had a one seed home through home field advantage throughout. And uh, this is what you see, man. So vibes are high in Philly when the line opened up, the initial line. For the Philly Chiefs game, it was uh, I think the Chiefs were favored by a point and a half, and I mean like six, seven minutes later, I looked back, and Philly was already favored by two. So um, a lot of the money, a lot of the betters, are high on Philly right now. Um, you know, at least right now. Yeah, we'll see um, if that changes at all. 